Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We call upon you this morning to praise the Lord. We don't suggest that you praise the Lord. We cannot beg you to praise the Lord, but we ask you to join in and praise the Lord this morning. Whether you nod your head or blink your eyes, whether you raise your hand or maybe you need to jump up this morning, but come on and praise the Lord, everybody, everybody. Come on and give God praise. I just have to do this for myself. When I get to heaven, I won't have to go to training for praise and worship. I won't have to go to boot camp for praise and worship. I won't have to take any classes for praise and worship because we have the opportunity right now as we gather together on one accord, as we gather together to encourage each other, as we gather together to hear a word this morning, as we gather together to be prayed for, as we gather together as saints, let us praise the Lord this morning. Come on and praise the Lord. It is a happy day. I'm hoping that it was a happy day when you gave your life to the Lord, when you confessed Jesus Christ. I pray that it was a happy day then and every day when you think about the goodness of God and all that he's done for you. I pray that your little soul can just cry out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Come on and praise him and sing hallelujah this morning. Praise him and sing hallelujah, whether you're in the car or in your bedroom, your living room, wherever you are, we are connected on this morning. So take the time to look to the left and look to the right, look down and look above because you don't know where you are on the screen and say good morning and hallelujah praise the lord this morning it is a happy day for this is the day that the lord has made and today we will rejoice i'm not going to have any rocks crying out i'm going to take my moment i don't know if tomorrow is promised i don't know if the next hour I don't know if the next minute is even promised to me. I'm going to take this moment that is given to me in time that I can praise God from whom all blessings go. I praise him just because of who he, uh, he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not going to just read these words. I need you to read them with me. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord, our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. They are planted in the house of our Lord, they flourish in the courts of our God. O oh Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and place where your glory abides. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous songs and sing praises. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We can still praise the Lord. We can still praise the Lord. We can still praise the Lord. We can still show a sign. We can continue to praise the Lord. We, don't, we can take a praise break and just give him his glory, give him his honor, give God what he is worth. That's where we give him our worship because we worship him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord God. Praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. 
Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Excellent is thy name in all of the earth. Lord God, we come to you this morning as humbly as we know how, pleading the blood of Jesus and leaning on your everlasting arm. We come, Lord God, giving thanks for provision and giving thanks for sustenance and most of all, giving thanks for your everlasting love through the blood of Jesus your only son, our Lord, for without the blood, we are nothing, but with the blood, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We come giving thanks this morning for our faithful congregation of officers and members and friends from the youngest to the most seasoned saints. And as we come, Lord, we are not ashamed nor afraid to seek your face and presence in a world full of trouble. For there's trouble in South Africa and there's trouble in Middle Africa and there's trouble in Northern Africa and there's trouble uh, in Ukraine and there's trouble in the United Nations and there's trouble in Western Europe and there's trouble in these United States and there's trouble downtown in DC and there's trouble in the White House and there's trouble in the Congress and the Senate, and there's trouble in District Heights, and everywhere we look, there's trouble, and we come, Lord, saying, help us. Help us, Lord, under the leadership of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Gerald Folsom and First Lady Joyce Folsom. Help us to seek higher heights and, and to be a beacon on a hill and a light in a time of darkness, and an answer when someone asks, what must I do? to be saved. Come Holy Spirit, come heavenly dove with all your quickening power. Teach our, te touch us Lord, touch us and touch our preacher if you will. Touch our preacher for this morning, the Reverend Beverly Calloway, as she comes to us with what you will have her to say. For if ever there was a time for a word from you, we sure do need one now. Bless you, Lord, and, and keep us in your care, we pray. We, we urge you, we beg you, Lord, to keep your hands on us and on our hearts and on our minds and on our souls. These things we ask and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Feel it. 
We welcome you to our Sunday service. On behalf of our senior pastor, Rev. Dr. Gerald Falsam, and First Lady Joyce Falsam, we are so grateful you are here, whether in person or in our virtual sanctuary. We are good ground to sow a seed. Hemaway is always ready to serve and meet the needs of the community. From our coat drives, backpack giveaways, food for our seniors, prayer and gift cards at the grocery store, our angel tree to support children who have incarcerated parents, baby diaper drives, and so much more. To give, visit us on our website at hemingwaymemorialame.org forward slash give. This includes using the Givelify app, searching for Hemingway Memorial AME, or PayPal using the links provided. We also have Cash App, dollar sign Hemingway Memorial. You can send a check made payable to the church, mailing it to 6330 Gateway Boulevard, District Heights, Maryland, 20747. If you are in the area, please feel free to bring your donation to our drop box on the Blazer Drive side of the church. For those of you in the physical sanctuary, you can drop your offering in any one of the boxes along the walls. Something I've never seen. Parents, children, guardians, oh my! We invite you to come out for our backpack and school supply giveaway on Saturday, August 27th at the church. We will be here from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. or until supplies last. Help us spread the word. We will have a modified schedule of Bible studies for the month of August. Tuesday night blueprint for young adults and our Wednesday morning monocall will continue. All other Bible studies will resume in September. Remember, keep reading your Bible. There will be no rehearsals or recordings for the 7.30 a.m. singing groups for August. Keep those singing voices ready. We'll see you in September. Pastor and First Lady Falsam will be taking a much needed vacation for the remainder of August. We still have one more Sunday before they return. Please be mindful of the preaching schedule. August 28th, Reverend Rosalind Roberts at 7.30 a.m., followed by Minister Devin Martin at 10.30 a.m. Have you visited our website, HemingwayMemorialAME.org, to experience all that is happening in our ministry? There you will find service times and how to connect with us, upcoming events, new members orientation, and the handbook, and how to sign up for our mailing list. Visit our worship page to watch and engage with our services and noonday Bible study. Watch live and on demand any time of day or night. We have several ways to give electronically or you can mail your donation should you choose that option. Visit our ministries page, check out what we have and how you can join or connect with one. Need to know if there's a meeting or an event happening? View the church calendar. We are excited about our membership portal where members can log on to their account Access all forms, including the financial voucher. Have you seen the press page? We've highlighted when Hemingway appears in the news with articles and video clips. Check out our virtual church page to access all Zoom links to services and Bible studies. Last, we have a way to contact us with any questions, concerns, prayer requests, and more.
the day that the Lord has made, and we are glad. Let us rejoice in it. Let us give thanks and praise to the Lord, because he is our God. And I don't know about you this morning, but I need him to survive. I am so thankful to him that he woke me up this morning, first of all, and allowed me to see a brand new day. I tell you, everybody that's out there that was out there are not able to see this day that the Lord has made just for me and just for you. So let us give thanks and praise the Lord. I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place this morning. I don't know about you, but if you're not feeling his presence, you need to take a time out right now and just invite the Holy Spirit into your presence, into your space because it's not left up to us to put that Holy Spirit in you. It's left up to you to invite the Holy Spirit into your space. It is a joy and it is a pleasure to be with you in worship this morning. I just thank God for this opportunity to be able to be here and to say a few words. I thank my pastor, I thank my pastor for allowing me to be in this posture for this preaching moment because he is the shepherd over this flock. He is responsible for making sure that we get the preaching and the teaching and he has to be careful who he entrusts this space to because we want the right message to go out into the world because God knows we have enough wrong messages that's going out. And that's maybe one of the reasons why our world is so messed up today because the right message is not getting to the people. So therefore we are struggling, we are dying. We, are, we, we just don't have enough worries in us to help us to live each and every day. We also, um, I give thanks to our first lady, um, Sister Joyce Folsom, in her absence as well. We pray that she and Pastor are uh, just um, allowing the Holy Spirit to serenade them and allow them to get that rest and, and uh, that they need so that when they come back, they will be in full force and ready to press on in the name of the Lord. To our steward board and our trustee board, my colleagues in the ministry, I know you are praying for me this morning. There is no question in my mind. And to our Hemingway friends, those which are virtual, my children and my grandchildren, I know you're out there this morning because you already text me, praise the Lord, that you were able to rise this morning. And if you know of anyone else out there who's not awake, invite them to join into this worship service this morning because we need everyone here to hear what God has in store for us today. Well, you know, I figured out before I got started, uh, if I... Um, did all of my acknowledgments and welcomes and all of that for about two or three minutes. That wouldn't leave me too many minutes left for the sermon. But praise God, um, I just believe that whatever word he has given me this morning, we are going to hear it. Amen? Amen. Okay, let's move on. Our scripture this morning is recorded in the book of John. The book of John, the seventh chapter uh, uh, the first through the ninth verses. And using the New Living Translation, it reads as follows. After this, Jesus traveled around Galilee. He wanted to stay out of Judea, where the Jewish leaders were plotting his death. But soon it was time for the Jewish festival of shelters or tabernacles. And Jesus' brother said to him, leave here and go to Judea where your followers can see your miracles. You can't become famous if you hide like this. If you can do so, such wonderful things, then show yourself to the world. You see, for even his brothers didn't believe in him. And Jesus replied, now is not the time for me to go, but you can go anytime. The world can't hate you, but it does hate me because I accuse it of doing evil. But you go on. 
I am not going to this festival because my time has not yet come. After saying these things, Jesus remained in Galilee. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for um, this time. We thank you, oh, Heavenly Father, because we want to hear a word from you. A word, Lord, that will strengthen our walk and help us to come just a little bit closer to you. I pray, oh, Heavenly Father, that your Holy Spirit would touch somebody's mind, would touch somebody's heart, and will draw them closer to you to the point where they will want to follow you. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. My brothers and sisters, this time last week on Saturday, I was attending my aunt's funeral. Over the past three years, there have been many deaths and many funerals, and many have occurred within our own church family. And while we are encouraged to rejoice when our loved ones depart, we trust and believe the scriptures, which assures us we can look forward to seeing them again. But does this make it any easier to say farewell? The last time I visited home, which is in Athens, was about five years ago when my family celebrated my mother's life. At that time, I was the one being consoled. And now with my aunt's passing, that role was reversed. I pause at this time to console them. You see, when our hearts are heavy, one of the hardest challenges we may face is to say the right thing at the right time, even for our family members. You see, only God knows our heart and the pain and the agony of the person who is experiencing that grief. We want our words to be encouraging and consoling. We want to say that which is appropriate for that time. From time to time, I must confess, I struggle greatly in this area for fear of reputation or rejection. You may ask the question, why preacher? Well, think about it. Were Jesus's words not refuted? Are they not still being refuted today? We get a glimpse of what is understood from the scripture reading this morning. When we see Jesus's brothers speaking with little concern for speech, they didn't seem to know or perhaps care about either the timing or propriety of their remarks. You see, Jesus wants us to stay focused and avoid conflict and distractions and understand his plan for our lives and know the right time for the action in spite of everything. John doesn't waste a lot of time with genealogists and other historical facts as the Synoptic Gospels does. He gets right to the point, the reason the book was written to tell us about Jesus, the son of God and all who believes him will have eternal life. John was the forerunner, the voice of the one crying in the wilderness, preparing the way for the Lord as foretold by the prophet Isaiah. He was an eyewitness to Jesus' baptism. It was his beloved disciple who said, he is the one who comes after me, whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He stood at the foot of the cross before him at his death and greeted him on the shores of Galilee in his resurrection. The first six chapters uh, of this um, uh, uh, book discusses Jesus and his identity and miracles are signs. John calls them his words and works, his words and works, which points to his authority. He turned water to wine, healed the royal official's son at Capernaum, healed the paralytic at Bethesda, fed 5,000 at Bethsaida, and walked on the waters of Galilee. He cleansed the temple. He had a heart to heart with Nicodemus, showed the Samaritan woman at the well a more excellent way to live, and he promised the disciples they would see even greater things. That was the manifestation of Jesus' glory and the rejection of that same glory. John describes it all. 
in spite of everything though, in spite of everything that Jesus did, the Jewish leaders still plotted to kill him. In our scripture this morning, Jesus had withdrawn from Judea. There were threats on his life. Can you imagine somebody seeking to kill you? The Jewish leaders were angry because Jesus established his authority to work on the Sabbath, which occurred back in chapter five. This authority made him co-equal with God the Father. They didn't understand what kind of uh, this kind of relationship, good relationships are challenging in any situation, be it family or otherwise. Jesus had moved from conflict in the city and was welcomed by the same in the suburbs. His half-brothers, James and John and Simon and Judas, were now the problem. Talk about disappointment. Can you imagine the son of God rejected by his own family, his own town, Nazareth, his neighbors, and the leaders all wanted him dead. Mm. The religious leaders felt that he was leading people astray, and no one spoke out for the fear of the Jewish leadership, the Jewish leadership. Do we have leadership like that today where people are afraid to speak what's really in their heart? Hmm. Within the family circle, you see, there may be some division when it comes to serving God. Then the question becomes, are we willing to risk our family's approval for serving the Lord? The word of God says in 1 John 4 and 20 that whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or a sister is a liar. For whoever does not love the brother and the sister whom they have seen cannot possibly love God who they have not seen. And yes, family members will squabble among themselves. Conflict among family members often arises when there's a death. Sometimes emotions and grief and making difficult decisions just takes over while our faith and trust in God seems to weaken for the moment. This incident with the brothers were greater though, because they did not have clear understanding of his teachings. They were part of those who wished to do harm to him. Can you imagine your own family wanting to harm you? But the Lord says in John 8 and 43, why do you not understand my speech or my words? This scripture is applicable to the brothers, the Jewish leaders, and maybe it applies to us today. The problem is they were prevented from understanding because they refused to listen. If we are not careful, we too may allow Satan to blindside us and catch us off guard in our stubbornness, our pride and our prejudice, keeping us from believing Jesus. These brothers were disrespectful. They ridiculed and made sarcastic marks about Jesus. They had not yet become uh, believers in the plan of salvation which Jesus was speaking. But did it weaken Jesus' testimony or his position? The problem wasn't Jesus' message and his life. Much of the conflict stemmed from jealousy and resentment. And Lord knows we have a lot of that going around in our world today. We just can't seem to live peacefully among each other. And there's certainly enough space in the world. They had a problem though with Jesus' ministry. They wanted to dictate and tell Jesus what to do. They wanted to showcase him. They wanted him to put his gifts and talent on public display. They wanted him to go to Judea and do some more miracles and show the world what he could do as though he had not already showed us. Hmm. But you see, Jesus was operating under the authority of the one who sent him, his heavenly father. Jesus knew the time was not yet come when he and his father had chosen. The time had not yet come that he and his father had chosen. There was more instruction that was needed for both the 12 and to the larger audience. You see, that was a lot of work to do then. And there's certainly a lot of work to do today. Why is it you think that we're still here 
Because you see, Jesus has commissioned all of us. He has a plan for all of us. He has put us here for the purpose of being able to spread the word. And this is why it's so important for us to keep coming so that we can learn more about the plan for our lives. It's not just about our status and our titles and our material possessions. We are here for a person's a purpose. This is a lesson for us. So when we sit to hear the preached word, I ask the question, are we listening to hear God's plan of salvation for our lives? Are we listening then to hear more about the plan for our lives and carrying out the Great Commission? Do we understand our purpose? We are losing the battle because the good news of Jesus Christ and his righteousness is not impacting the world as intended. Do we listen to hear and understand the priest's word? Or do we listen to a critique and to hear some hoop? and to, to hear someone throw out some catchy phrases. No, no, no. From the time the person enters into this sacred space, whether it's virtual or whether it's in person, it's time for us to begin praying that the Holy Spirit speaks and that the Holy Spirit moves and that the Holy Spirit reveals the word of God. We should be praying for our discernment of the word so that each one of our needs are met. For me, I am praying that the Holy Spirit will use me right now to the glory of God, because it's not about me. It's not about Beverly. I am but a vessel, just an instrument to be used to bring about the message of the Lord. For the moment, you may be praying for healing in your body or in your mind or even in your big toe, whatever the need is. Someone else may be praying for God to direct their finances so they can feed their family, so that they can clothe their family, so that they can provide a shelter or school supplies for their family. I can remember once praying for my finances. I needed money and I needed it in the worst kind of way. I needed beautiful greenbacks, no coins, but coins are good. But it did not show up in the mailbox. I did not find it on the sidewalk. And you know, I'm always looking down for pennies and dimes or whatever I can find and I picked them up. I don't know about you, but even though I said not coins, they do make dollars. <laughs> I did not find anything in some long neglected envelope that was in the mix in all the mail. And we do have to watch out for that because there have been times when there have been little checks that have actually come through the mail and I thought they were advertisement. I just threw them all in the trash. <laughs> Lord have mercy. But I want you to know I did get what I needed. It came though through an opportunity to earn it. My supervisor walked up to me and said, hey, Bev, I need someone to fill a shift and ask me if I could work. And I, I said, yes. And I looked up to the Lord, to the hills from which cometh my help. And I said, thank you, Lord. But then, that other part of me said, well, Lord, I kind of thought they were just going to add a little something to my paycheck. I didn't expect it to come like that. But you see, when you ask God for something, and if we believe and trust that he'll do it for us, we just have to be open to receive it. Because it may not come the way that we think it should come, but it will come. Because the God knows how to supply our needs. He knows how to supply them in a way so that perhaps we can think the next time. You see, all of this is part of God's divine plan. So in spite of everything for any opposition that we may face, we need to remain focused and just trust God because he is the one like I said, who will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Just as Jesus withdrew from conflict and danger so that he could continue his ministry, we too should steer clear of quick and easy unearned cash, get rid of payday loans that uh, get you deeper into debt, steer clear of funny money that's corrupting our neighborhoods, causing brothers to be against brothers and communities against communities. 
Although Galilee or District Heights was not as prominent as Judea, it was Galilee. It was an obscure place considered both insignificant and unimportant. But hear this, God chose this place for his son to minister because he knew people were there that needed to hear his word. Because just maybe the true measure I hear, I tell you, and success of ministry is not in the crowd or the numbers. Then I say, what is the problem if we have multiple mega ministries throughout the state? Are we focused on saving souls or just increasing our numbers? The church's goal is to save souls, I tell you, and not always showcase the workings of the church building. Let us not confuse the word of God with the workings of the church. Our goal is about people and whether we are about hearing and heeding God's word. The message should speak to our heart as believers. We should never feel embarrassed or less important to be placed in an obscure ministry by the Lord. In spite of everything, know that this is not necessarily our destination in life. This just may be our layover station for this season. You see, Jesus can use any situation when man says no, he can override that decision. He has all the power and the authority to do so. When Jesus withdrew, he did not withdraw from his ministry. He didn't sit idle and having a pity party. He didn't sit around doing nothing. He wasn't even sitting around worrying about what people thought about him. He continued ministering wherever he was, ministering to the people and meeting their needs and teaching and preaching the gospel were his life. And look at how God, and I just have to say this, has touched the life of one of our own. God has used Brianna to minister in song and praises to him and her layover position and there are others. Just as Jesus didn't sit idle doing nothing in the interim, neither did she. And now look at her. It's time for her next assignment. And see, this is how God works in us and through us. Sometimes he has to sit us in a place and get our attention so that he can teach us a lesson. So that when it's time to go forth, we are prepared. And this is what he does in the family of God. We are all family. We're all here to support each other. Something that perhaps the brothers had not yet understood. So Jesus continues to address the situation with his brothers' unbelief. He wants all of us to understand that there is only one appointment for unbelievers. And that un appointment, unfortunately, is death. Jesus continues and this conversation by explaining that now was not the time, the day for his acclaim, not the time for the world to accept and acknowledge his claims and his work, the day when many would proclaim him as savior, king of kings and lord of lords, the day when many would bow down and acknowledge him that his claim to be the Messiah, the son of God, which was true. The day when would come at the appointed time by God. Because the world hated Jesus, we can't expect if we are believers that it will not hate us as well if we're serving God. If circumstances are going to go too well, you better ask yourself the question, am I following him as I should? We can be grateful if life goes well, but not at the cost of following half-heartedly or not at all. Jesus was on a mission, for this is why God sent him into the world. He came in to do the work of him who sent him. He came to seek and save and not to condemn. 
Jesus tells us in John 8 and 51, verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my sayings, he will never see death. To keep Jesus' sayings means to hear his words and obey them. When Jesus says, those who obey me won't die, he is talking about the spiritual death, not the physical death, but even the physical death will eventually be overcome. Those who follow Jesus will be raised to live with him eternally. For is it, for it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. At the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord and all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. For the kingdom is the Lord's and he is the governor among the nations. Jesus' final teaching was getting closer. He was uh, in his last six months of his earthly preaching and teaching ministry. He could have been expected to have a sad and mournful message about his upcoming departure, his coming agony, his shameful treatment, and his future death. But he did not. In spite of everything, everything, he continued to give guidance. In spite of conflict, he keeps promoting peace today. In spite of separation, he continues to remind us of his promise to return through the Holy Spirit. You and I will be victorious if we continue to trust God in spite of everything. Amen. Praise the Lord. Bless your name, God. Bless your name. You have heard the preached word. And we don't want you to be in the same situation as Jesus' brothers. You see, it wasn't until after our Lord's death that they became believers. In spite of everything that's going on in your life right now, and I know there's a lot that's going on in all of our lives, because we are all surrounded by overwhelming trials and tribulations of all kinds, but we still have to trust God. He loves us and wants us to be fully covered and protected. What did the word say about unbelievers? The only appointment that they may have is an appointment with death. And they, if they do not receive their salvation while we are yet alive. So we offer Christ right now. If you do not know the Lord as your personal savior, now is the time to speak out. Don't wait, don't wait, do it right now. Because the way that we are leaving the world today, you don't wanna be left out. There is nothing that you have to do to prepare yourself. It's simple, just like your ABCs. All we have to do is acknowledge, believe, and confess that the Lord Jesus, confess the Lord Jesus, confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and you will receive your salvation right now. So don't wait. If there is anyone, just type it in the, into our chat. It's me, it's me. I need the Lord. I wanna give my life to him right now. If you, you prefer to do it privately, send us a private message in the chat. Or we can be reached through the contact number listed on our virtual screen. One of our ministers will contact you because we want to hear from you. We want everybody to be in that great getting up number. One day when the Lord comes back to claim his own, we want all to be a part of that. So think about it. Won't you give your life, give your life to the Lord right now. Amen. Amen. What a powerful and wonderful word. Thank you, Reverend Calloway. Thank you, Reverend Calloway, for reminding us how the Lord, bless your name, God, 
how the Lord needs us to hear him as he is speaking to us. Let us confess, let us affirm, let us state what it is that we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended to the dead. And on the third day, he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father. And from there, he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of the saints. I believe in the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. That's what we believe, amen. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless. Bless your name, God. Before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory, honor, dominion, and power, both now, bless your name, God, and forever. We thank you, Lord, for your presence here in your service. Thank you for the word and the preacher. Now, Lord, bless these people. Watch over these people and make your presence constant with them. In the matchless and holy name of Jesus, we all say amen, amen, and amen.